Why cheese? Um, it's a good question. I, I like it. It tastes good. It matures and, and it, you could affect it. You select an effect. I guess you could age out wine, but with cheese you get a different vintage every day. Uh, whereas with wine you have to wait every year, so maybe I'm impatient as well. But it's good. I think I just think it's amazing. You know, you start with milk, right? You got milk, and white stuff, a little bit of an enzyme and a couple of bacteria, and the way you treat it, you end up with with things as different as Camembert to Lancashire to Gruyere to Stilton. It's just, it's all from that same thing. If you look at the ingredient, it's the same, and yet you could affect it so much in the way it goes. I think that's really neat. Oh, take your finger off. That's delicious. Quite fruity. I think that's a, yeah. No sa sandy powdery. No. Um, did you want Chesh, Doug? Yes, please. Um, right, should we try the fourth first? Uh, right, these are the, that's the fourth of December. Affinage is a funny word that people use all the time. Uh, which, I don't know, maybe we use it, maybe we do it. I think, yes, we, we do affinage. Affinage is, is finishing the cheese. But we, we just say we mature the cheese and we taste it a lot because, because that's really what we're doing. We're paying attention to it. But, but we try and be mindful of what we do. If I'm here, I'm looking at these cheeses. If I'm looking at the, the October cheese and the January cheese, you know, I'm looking not just, yes, it's going to be grayer because it's older, but I'm looking at, at the sizes, at the, at the bow on the cheese. I'm paying attention to what molds are growing on it. I'm thinking, what's that going to taste like? Who, how much longer are we going to keep that? When should I taste it again? I'm standing here thinking about that. I'm thinking, you know what? Benjamin in Minneapolis would really like that. But he'd want it a little older where CJ in Des Moines might prefer this one because I know my customer really well. That, that's what we need to be doing. <clears throat> well, let's look at this cheese here. This is called Risley. Um, it was made on the 24th of April. Um, Today is the 28th of April, so it's four days old. It's got no rind on it. It's very fresh. It's still got a lot of moisture coming out of it. Um, and we will take that cheese um, from this stage here to if we turn around and look in the room behind us. These were made on the 20th of March, so they're about five weeks older. So during that time, these cheeses will have had a lot of attention. They'll have been washed many times. Um, they'll have been moved from one type of environment to another. This room is running at about 10 degrees with a very high humidity, somewhere in the high 90s. Um, and it's a very good environment for long-term maturing of cheeses without, kind of, without getting it too ripe. Normally, the way that we work with producers is, is very collaborative. The producer may have an idea and ask us to do something with the cheese, or we may have an idea and ask the producer to do something with the cheese. And it's a very nice way to work. Um, it is uh, 
very much a two-way street. Um, and normally we have a really kind of close relationship with our producers. I know there's some truth to it all. A family called Shepherds that lived at Bagworth were the last people to make it on a farm. And we weren't going to make Leicester cheese because in our mind it was a fairly, it, it had been made badly and had a bad reputation. Um, but I went to, to the pub one evening and met a, a butcher friend and he remembered going with his father in the back of his, back of his butcher's van and going to Shepherds of Bagworth and picking the cheese up in the rounds and he used to sit on the cheese in the back of the van on the way home. And he said you've got to make Red Leicester cheese. And I said, no, we can't make that, it's terrible stuff. But he said, no, you have to make it. It used to be really good and how he remembered it was, was wonderful. So we set out from the beginning to make Red Leicester or Leicester cheese how he remembered it. So we contacted Neil's Yard before we even started making cheese because uh, they were sort of our target market. But we didn't, we thought it would take five or maybe 10 years to get into that shop. But we underestimated their enthusiasm for helping out artisan British cheese producers, particularly those that are producing cheese from their own cow's milk. Neil's Yard come and visit us about once every other month and they come and grade our cheese and, and they'll pick out the ones that they want. Grading cheese is the tasting of the cheese and uh, smelling it and tasting it and deciding um, you know, whether it, what, what market it's right for really. Sometimes it's, it doesn't sound that complimentary but you know, you have to, we have to be honest about our cheese. Um, because we want it to end up at the right marketplace. And if we're not happy with it, then it doesn't get sold as Spark and Ho Red Leicester. Right. I find these quite exciting. Is that a nice here? Send syrup. I think anyone could do it, is the thing. There's nothing to say that people can't go and buy good cheese. There's nothing to say they can't take the time to age it well, and there's nothing to say they can't give really great service both to the producers and the customers. If, if, if there's great cheese being sold, we're gonna win. <laughs>